Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Matt with Dragon Sword Gaming. Today, we're going to be installing a cap kit from Console 5 in this um, mini SNES 101, uh, as well as change out the 7805 voltage regulator, and then we will install Voltar's RGB bypass uh, mod board. So, let's get started. So, I think this for the foreseeable future. Anytime I'm making a video, I'm going to use uh, this iFixit kit. That way, if anybody wants to follow along, the kit's uh, fairly cheap on Amazon. I believe it was $30. Uh, and it has almost every bit you could imagine you would need for uh, opening up these old consoles and uh, game cartridges and stuff like that. Uh, so, unnecessary, uh, but just to make it easy for uh, somebody that's wanting to follow along so they know uh, which bits I'm using. Uh, so to get this opened up we will need the 4.5 millimeter uh, security bit and on the back side we have uh, four of those security screws. Okay and I've already cleaned this up inside and out. Uh, uh, typically, a customer sends me their console. I, you know, I give it at least a, a light cleaning. Um, so I remove all the buttons and, and the throat and clean all that out. Uh, I've got every uh, cartridge cleaner you can imagine: Super Nintendo, Genesis, all, all that stuff. So I'll end up uh, polishing the uh, pins on the cartridge connector uh, too. Okay, and from here we've got one, two, three, four. Uh, five, six, and back here is seven. They're all Phillips. So we will remove our 4.5 security bit and then grab the, and these are all marked, which makes it kind of nice. There's a uh, number two Phillips here. Okay, and then these last three uh, silver screws are all uh, longer screws so just make sure when you're putting these back that you're putting them back only in these spots and not somewhere else otherwise you're going to damage the case okay with those seven Phillips screws out we can now remove the motherboard set that bottom case off to the side okay and then the shielding here will just pop off Okay, so we're going to start by getting at all the uh, capacitors which are located behind this uh, heat shield here. Uh, so to get this off, we've got one Phillips screw right there holding the uh, 7805 voltage regulator. Now we've got to remove uh, this Phillips and this Phillips screw uh, to remove this uh, heat shield, or uh, excuse me, heat sink. Okay, now you see come right off. Now we can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight through hole electrolytic capacitors, and then our 7805 voltage regulator right here. Okay, from the factory, the legs on these capacitors, uh, they, they don't trim them very much. They're, they're sticking way out there. So I like to come by and just trim them down a little shorter makes it easier for me when I'm coming through and uh, trying to get these uh, desoldered. Go ahead and trim the legs of that uh, uh, 7805 voltage regulator as well. Okay and then what I like to do is come back and add a little bit of solder uh, to each of these uh, before I use my uh, desoldering station. Got some fresh solder on all those. You can see I've actually even bridged uh, ground there uh, to five volts, I believe that is. Uh, but that's no issue because we're gonna come back and uh, just remove all these right now. So I've got my uh, Heiko FR300 heated up. So I'll come at these uh, pins of the voltage regulator first. There you 
go. So all those are loose and the old 7805 voltage regulator is out. Okay, so now uh, typically I'd go through and just remove all these, uh, continue removing those with my FR300. But what if you don't have an FR300? Well, then what I would recommend is to add a little more solder to all these. Just kind of flood them with solder. And then what I like to do, and let me see if I can get us a better view here, is hold the board up with uh, my left hand and then grabbing at the capacitor with uh, my thumb and uh, pointer finger just to help hold it. And then I'll come and just add heat to both of these just kind of back and forth. And it'll start heating up. And you can slowly walk your I mean, I'm not pulling at all, because you will pull these pads out of here. You can slowly walk that capacitor out of there, just by going back and forth with some heat. And there you go. Okay, so now we have removed all the through-hole capacitors and the uh, 7805 voltage regulator uh, and doing it the way that we did it uh, by heating them up and then removing the capacitors uh, still leaves solder uh, in all your holes. So at that point you would come back with one of those mechanical um, uh, vacuum suckers which is I believe about $15 to $20. I'll try to link one in the description. Then you could just heat it up on this side and use your sucker on this side uh, to suck the solder through and get that cleaned up. And that's how you can uh, desolder some of this through hole stuff without having a uh, Heiko FR300 or something like that. I tried to dig up my uh, uh, my vacuum sucker and I cannot find it anywhere. Uh, <laughs> so I must have gotten rid of it and all I have uh, available to me is the FR300. So I will use that to come back and just get all the solder out of all these holes. And there you go. We'll discard these components and bring on the cap kit from console file. Just print out a uh, capacitor map. Uh, and then just put all the uh, capacitors on it uh, on the same piece of paper as well. Makes it easy for me. Okay, so C52 was not populated in this board uh, in the North American uh, units, uh, so we will not be putting that in uh, today. So we'll start over here on C60, which going off of uh, this list that I've printed off of uh, console 5, C60 is a 220 microfarad, 6.3 volts. So we'll just find that in our caps here. So let's see. And there it is, 220 microfarad, 6.3 volt. And this is C60, which you can find on your board. 60 and just make sure that you get your uh, polarity correct uh, all these caps are facing down towards the front of the board so I'll go ahead and get these in I'll just bend over the legs so that I can go ahead and get them all in first so we'll just move on and keep doing that
all those in. Legs bent over holding them in. We'll go ahead and get them all soldered up. Okay, now that we have uh, all the capacitors installed, I uh, went ahead and cleaned that up with some IPA. Uh, usually if I was just doing a refurbishment, we'd go ahead and put the heat seat back on and then I'd put the uh, new uh, 7805 voltage regulator in. Uh, but since we're going to be installing uh, Voltar's RGB bypass board in this, uh, we'll go ahead and do that first. Now, usually we have to clip the legs on this if we're just doing the RGB bypass but since we had already uh, replaced all these capacitors uh, we already clipped that so we'll get Voltar's board installed in the area uh, where the uh, multi out is okay that is about as close as I can get I think and totally in my way, but if it makes for good video, here we go. And there you go, it's as easy as that. All those uh, solder joints, nice and shiny. Uh, so anytime you're doing this kind of work, just make sure you get some, some decent uh, name brand solder. Okay, I've got it zoomed in uh, to the area we'll be working in. So for Voltar's board, uh, we need to pull RG, uh, red, green, blue, and composite sink. And those will be pulled from these vias here. So this is composite sink, and then red, green, and blue. So to get started with this, we'll uh, prep our wire. Let's get some torque conductor here. And get these stripped. And just get these uh, tinned up. Okay, now we'll bring in our pretend wire, hook up our composite sink as well as RGB. And then I'm just going to kind of run this off in the direction it needs to go just to make sure everything's sitting where it needs to be. Make sure it's laying down nice and flat. Just like that. We'll go ahead and add some no clean. And then get this soldered up. There you go, that's a nice connection. So we'll just follow this up. Do Voltar's board here. And cut it off, giving us a little bit of slack. And then I'll go ahead and strip these and get these pre tinned as well. So composite sink. And B. I'm just going to touch 
all these up one more time. Just to make sure that I'm making good connections on all these. And there you go. Uh, Voltar's RGB bypass board has been installed. Uh, all the caps have been replaced as well. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start getting our console put back together. So to make this uh, 7805 um, easy to install, I like to just go ahead and attach it to our uh, heatsink. And we'll find that that has the um, uh, the two washers on it and the lock washer. Go ahead and grab our number two bit from our iFixit kit. Maybe a uh, number two Phillips. That's super tight, just enough to kind of hold it up and down in place where it needs to go. That way, we can use it to help us line everything up so that we get that back in the right spot. Okay, now with those two um, screwed in, um, and then our voltage regulator secured um, to the heat sink. We can go ahead and get that soldered in. We'll go ahead and trim those legs down a little so they're not sticking up so high. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get this thing back together. We've got our bottom shell all nice and clean. We'll go ahead and board put back in there get our screws just remember that our three silver ones to go uh, on each side of the cartridge connector and then one in the back by the AV port set a uh, number two Phillips out of the I fix it kit like I said I'll leave the I'll leave the link to this uh, kit in the description. It's not an affiliate link or, link or anything like that. Um, and the reason I bought this kit was because it actually had all the uh, uh, tri-wing uh, screws and stuff we needed for getting into Game Boys and uh, the Switch um, controllers and stuff like that. So it had all that stuff in it already so I figured what the heck for 30 bucks I'd give it a shot. And I, I really do like it. The bits do feel uh, pretty nice. I just wish, my only complaint I guess would be these don't lock in enough sometimes, especially if you're using the magnet and you're trying to grab something, the magnet will stay. <laughs> uh, but for, I think for the price and everything you're getting in this thing, uh, in the kit, uh, it's, a, it's a good deal. Especially if you're mobile uh, mobile too because uh, it's all just right there in one kit so. enough of the commercial all right so with those three in we can go get our uh, shielding and it's got these tabs that just lock in to your uh, cartridge slot down here at the bottom There we go, SNES 101 has been uh, completely refurbished with new caps from uh, console 5 as well as a brand new uh, 7805 voltage regulator and then had uh, the RGB bypass uh, um, made by Voltar uh, installed in this console as well. So now I am ready to test it out. Let's do it. 
Okay guys, I've got us uh, set up to test this here. So we've got our SNES 101 uh, that's been uh, refurbished with uh, new capacitors from console 5 uh, as well as replace the 7805 voltage regulator and installed Voltar's RGB bypass uh, mod board. Um, running out of this uh, through some uh, SCART cables that were custom made by Retro Access. I'll try to leave links in the description for everything uh, that I'm using here. So coming out of our SNES 101 through the custom cables uh, into the uh, adapter uh, for RGBN for the XRGB Mini uh, FrameMeister. That's my upscaler that I'm using. And then out of there, HDMI into my capture card which is a uh, Elgato. So we'll go ahead and power this on. I'll make this bigger so you can get a better look. And there you go, that looks really nice to me. Um, and I, I, I don't even have any, uh, I haven't updated the profiles on my Frame Meister uh, to uh, some of the profiles that have been being worked on in the last two or three years so I, I could probably get this actually looking even better than that this is just a stock frame meister uh, uh, and it is stretched up to 16 by 9 uh, just to fill more of the screen for you uh, so while this is running I just want to say if you like this uh, please hit that like button or uh, if you'd like to uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this uh, go ahead and do that as well um, I think I'll go ahead and uh, uh, put you up a side-by-side -side, uh, just to finish off this video so you can kind of see the difference. Um, so what I'll do is right now this is coming out of my uh, SNES uh, through RGB since we installed our RGB bypass through our cables and into the RGB in on the Frame Meister. Uh, so I'll let this run uh, for a cycle or two and then I will I will uh, record it through uh, composite. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hook up composite into the upscaler and then run that through and let you see what that looks like side by side with uh, uh, composite and um, uh, RGB. Uh, anyways, guys, I hope to have another video out soon. I've got three or four recorded and they're just sitting there waiting for me to get through uh, editing this stuff. Uh, it's, it's been a busy year. Uh, since this is my first year uh, operating a uh, retro game shop as well as uh, doing all my repair and mod work uh, for online so it's been a cra crazy year and even crazier trying to get all these taxes and stuff done so if y'all bear with me I'll, I hope to have uh, more content out uh, anyways guys latest